Welcome back to another interview in uh, our Goldsmith interview series as part of our uh, 2019 lecture series here at UTSOA. I'm here with uh, Kiriakos Kiriaku and uh, Sophia Kramitsi of Kasi Studio. Uh, you guys are the, the uh, Ruth Carter Stevenson visiting professors here at UTSOA this spring and we're very happy to have you. Um, I've been lucky enough to, uh, to be in their studio this spring um, and it's been, it's been a pleasure uh, getting to know you guys. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about um, about your ongoing work and research, and you guys have a very interesting uh, path, and, and that has led you to Austin. Uh, but I want to start by by mentioning that uh, in your in your bio, you mentioned building, teaching, um, and traveling, which is interesting. A lot of critical practices build and teach and draw, but not a lot of people make the uh, the decision to travel as a part of their practice. So I want to talk. I want to ask why that's something that is so fundamental to, uh, to the way that you guys are working now. Want to pick that? Well, uh, well, first of all, thank you for having us here. Um, travel, uh, it's something that kind of we've been doing instinct instinct instinctively since, uh, since we met uh, Sophia and I. Uh, 16 years ago, first year of undergrad, um, our relationship was built in a series, through a series of travels. Uh, the kind of uh, travels you do at the beginning as a uh, young uh, student, um, from that to uh, uh, going out on an um, Erasmus exchange program for six months. Uh, to coming to the U.S. to study more, uh, and then in the U.S. Uh, becoming obsessed with this country and trying to explore it through a number of road trips and other trips. And, and actually, the, the, the way we first met was, uh, the first thing we collaborated was the organization of a trip, uh, which was the annual first year trip in, uh, in our undergrad school. Terrible trip, but <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, tra tra traveling is something that that defined us before we realized that that, that was the case, and and when we did realize that that this is part of our design toolbox, like we we decided to 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 claim it as a methodology of, of thinking of, of of addressing the world from the perspective of an architect um, to the point that that um, my my doctoral thesis actually makes the claim that traveling is the education for for an architect uh, and and kind of tries to, to trace uh, a lineage of, of travels and other kind of extracurricular activities uh, that have been literally the exoskeleton of, uh, of architectural education mm -hmm. from, from its inception up until, up until this point. Yeah, absolutely. So what, um, why Texas? <laughs> what <laughs> intrigued you about this Texas. great large um. state? Um. The food. <laughs> <laughs> to be bluntly, I don't, I don't, I don't blame you at all. To That's be bluntly honest, <laughs> and, and we're kind of very. Well, the first time we came to Texas, we're we're actually we're actually we were in New Orleans, mm -hmm. and we were planning to go to Alabama, and then last moment we said, why don't we change and instead go east or west and go to Texas? Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it was our first visit to Marfa. We basically drove all the way from New Orleans to Houston, San Antonio. Um, we literally fell in love with the place. Uh, that vastness, which is co something completely new to us, but at the same time extremely familiar in the sense that uh, if you drive in the West Texas, the kind of uh, landscape will uh, <coughs> be reminiscent of a kind of Aegean mm -hmm. island uh, and that sense of uh, flatness you experience in the water uh, sailing in the Mediterranean is actually not very different from driving in the mm -hmm. desert through an archipelago of towns. Sure. Mm -hmm. 
Um, let's talk a little bit about, that's a good segue into your ongoing research, uh, your Micropolitan America research. Talk a little bit about uh, how that came about, sort of what interested you in that, and, uh, and maybe sort of some of the conclusions that you've been drawing from that recently. I know it's been an ongoing project. Right, the, the story behind that is us uh, graduating uh, from Columbia University in New York, being um, imprisoned on, on the island, on Manhattan, mm -hmm. for, for kind of like a full academic year. Um, and uh, on, on that exit moment, applying for a traveling fellowship uh, that we won, but the, the, we kind of put together this manifesto of kind of like an anti-exotic uh, destination, which at that point was very, very fashionable for people, I don't know, to go out to Atacama or Alaska, like really kind of... Uh, an emptiness in, 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 in many different kind of layers and, and, and ways of understanding that, that, that void. In our case, the proposal had to do with the void of the US, like our void of understanding it, our void as, as, as foreigners, as, as kind of like baby New Yorkers, right? right. Uh, and we, we won that, that fellowship and started traveling in that American rural exotic uh, landscape that, that we realize that it, it, it kind of is left outside from, from uh, the walls of academia and, and the discipline actually as, as a whole. Um, it's also left outside the country. <laughs> I mean, until recently, um, where it, rural America kind of made a very strong statement mm -hmm. at the last election. Mm -hmm. uh, till then, it basically existed only in very romantic kind of, uh, illustrations of it through movies or literature. Mm. Uh, but but it's, it's a fascinating place uh, that nobody cares about. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's interesting too, because as you mentioned before, you know, before the election, yeah, it was always sort of this romanticized place. And now uh, your research Correct me, or that began before the election, right? Yeah. And so yeah. it's been. I, I think how, what's been interesting to me, a question I've had, is how do you approach it now, where you don't want to be. Um, I mean, there's a certain amount of criti criticality that needs to come with it, but also, um, you know, without trying to seem like you know uh, snobby urban people that we all that we all can can uh, try to avoid being in academia. I mean, how, how, how do you guys kind of approach that, just walking that line? Is it tricky? It, it is, because it is, I'll, I'll say it for the first time, it is a political project, mm -hmm. even though we've never called it as such. Like, I think it doesn't need to be, it doesn't need that adjective. It is, right. it is, it is what it is. Um, I think we, we address it with, with curiosity, respect, mm -hmm. And, and we really see a lot of latent intelligence in the way that, that these systems are put together, these towns are put together, these towns are, were born and now are, are at the point of, of getting very old. Um, so we, we don't suspend our criticism, which, which is address, I think, the, 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 the territory with respect uh, and, and I think we have that much enthusiasm and curiosity to learn from uh, that, that landscape that hopefully any pre-received ideas or academic snobism uh, is, is suspended. Um, I mean, obviously the project, regardless if we want it or not, like it, it falls under the lineage of, of learning from Las Vegas or, or all these different uh, traveling design projects that, that are identifying uh, an unknown territory to learn from. Um, so I think the, 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 the moment we, 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 we truly believe that there is something to be learned from, to learn from one, right. once we get there, hopefully that, that, that kind of superior criticism um, is suspended. Um, yeah. And we never had the attitude of 
solving mm -hmm. problems or uh, saving the world. Um, as Sophia said, it's purely curiosity that drives us there, um, with a kind of sense of romanticism that you know builds up the fire in the in the vision. And I also think the fact that we're foreign helps a lot in the way we're perceived by by locals because it immediately puts it out of the conversation, out of the conflict. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even though we've been living in the U.S. for a, for a while, we're still this weird guys from Greece, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's interesting because it's, I think for me, as somebody from the South who's been approaching this project as well in, in your studio, it's it's been this interesting. Um, I grew up in the suburbs and have family that are from places like this. It's been interesting trying to approach this both with a critical lens and also you know n not trying. Trying to remember, like that's sort of my roots. That's sort of where mm -hmm. I came from, you know. And so, it, it, I feel like you guys have really facilitated that really well, as far as uh, not trying to, you know. I, I remember first day, of, you know, we're not here to fix anything. We're not here to solve anything. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's been a really interesting ongoing project, and uh, I know we look forward to, to hearing more about it. Uh, but I want to switch gears and talk about some of your other research, which is sort of on a different spectrum, which is the condominium metabolism project that you guys have been working on, looking at um, condos in New York City which is to totally different type of urban condition. Um, so why don't you talk a little bit just about uh, where that came out of and, and again, uh, sort of what you're finding with that. Well, uh, I mean, you can argue that it's the exact opposite. Um, the condominium right now, I mean, residential building is right now the absolute manifestation of urban life, mm -hmm. right? Everybody wants to live in an apartment, everybody wants to own a condo. Um, people moving to cities, and uh, there's nothing more relevant uh, than looking at the residential building uh, to see how people uh, inhabit urban centers. Um, the, the project started uh, in a similar uh, way, but this time kind of emerging from practice. Um, throughout our uh, first couple of years of actually working in New York, uh, we were exposed to this amazing ecosystem of uh, real estate development uh, where everything or almost everything we knew about architecture and the kind of um, idealistic nature, uh, the, the, the principles of, of being a good architect were turned upside down um, in, a, in a practice that uh, basically the success of architecture is measured uh, not by critiques, uh, reviews, or the kind of spatial qualities, but mostly by money. Mm -hmm. um, well. What, what's interesting with our project is that, again, we, we address it as architects, but again, uh, outside, uh, coming from, out, from, from the outside, like it, it was, again, kind of a very um, much kind of like unknown ecosystem that, that we were observing eventually from within, but having, having entered uh, that, that conversation. Um, while we had already started that, that research, the tallest building on, in Manhattan actually became a residential one. So the Empire State Building is no longer the, tall, the tallest building on, on, on the island, right? Like someone can claim that their house is kind of like the, the, their apartment, the tallest uh, occupiable surface uh, in, in, in the city. Um, so again, we felt that there was a lot of uh, looking down upon in, in, in that system, that the architecture is kind of one of the six protagonists as we define them, from academia at least, and, and we felt that we need to, to address that, that untapped potential to, to bring that, that re really crude reality in, in the, the under the lens of, of an architectural researcher, like understand it from, from all the different 
lenses uh, that, that, that we define as the protagonists of the project. And again, it, it is a time that uh, <clears throat> architecture was heavily looking outside the discipline to redefine itself. Mm -hmm. uh, the time where uh, architects would look at uh, biology, technology, um, anything but architecture to feed new agendas for academia. So we thought that uh, the corporate architecture we corporate is a very narrow way to define it, but, but this kind of automatic architecture right. that, that, that happens in, uh, in Manhattan and many other uh, cities, it's irrelevant enough to become uh, an, an input into an architectural conversation as, as an outsider. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's basically, even though New York is probably the most extreme example right now, it's absolutely a microcosm of urban, urban development mm -hmm. everywhere. We see it in Austin now, too. With, Towers popping up along uh, Lady Bird Lake that are just mm -hmm. you know generic developer-driven uh, buildings. And I think it's but the the point is going beyond the architecture. Uh -huh. the, 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 this, uh, certain architectural typologies, uh, gestures, uh, um, vocabularies, whatever you want to call, studying the actual buildings that of course we're interested in, but. At the same time, it, reflect, it reflects a much larger conversation about culture and about mm -hmm. uh, the society and what kind of world we're living in, right? right. Uh, so that's what we're trying to reflect through this research. We use the building in order to tell uh, other things. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we're looking forward to I know that y'all are going to speak a little bit about both of those projects, so we're looking, looking forward to that. Uh, the, the last thing I want to ask, um, and we ask everybody who, who goes uh, – through our lecture series, this question is, uh, where do you find joy, particularly where do you find unexpected joy in your work or in your travels? <laughs> well, I, I think you're asking in the, the, the best possible way because if I think we find joy when, and it's not always obviously, when we are able to equate work with Traveling, mm -hmm. researching, with producing, teaching, with designing. Like we, we really don't distinguish um, between these different operations, not because they're different, but because we understand them as parts of a whole. Um, that, that we cannot travel anymore without... Um, <laughs> producing a critical lens of, of, of looking out at the world. We can't work without traveling, we can't teach without traveling, we can teach without working, I guess. <laughs> it's kind of like a full circle of, of, of uh, these operations coming, one chasing after the other, I guess. Yeah, yeah and it's, I mean, <laughs> it's a hard question in a sense, because as an architect, We've learned that we should be having joy uh, out of everything, mm -hmm. right? We, we kind of studied architecture because we wanted this was our hobby, right? It mm -hmm. was our, our fun activity, and we can make a job out of it. I mean, it, it's not right like that in reality, but I I think architects tend to recently um, maybe take themselves too seriously so mm -hmm. we kind of we have this vision of bringing back the the fun in, in architecture in the way we practice it right mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and try to enjoy it uh, the way we kind of learn enjoying it at the, at the, at the school as students mm -hmm. or uh, reading about architecture and uh, throughout all the visionary moments of our of our architectural education. Mm. Sure. I think you guys are doing a great job of that. We're looking forward to your uh, to your lecture today and uh, thank you again on behalf of, of UT for being here. Thank you. Thanks. We're very happy to be here. <laughs>